So our Old Testament reading, I forgot to print that out, so I'm going to have to see if I can read it out of this little teeny tiny, uh, you guys probably already know this one though, right? Micah 6, 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. We had so many announcements and prayers today. Wow, that was awesome. So, you know, we've been looking at what we believe as United Methodists. We first looked at grace, and there are three kinds of grace. Prevenient grace, and justifying grace, and sanctifying grace. And then we talked about John Wesley's three simple rules. Doing no harm, doing good, good and staying in love with God. 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 So when we get to the heart of Methodism, we could easily invest several weeks into our understanding of our topic for today. It's our social principles. And I really just want to remind you that Methodists take a broad view of how our faith actively relates to the world. We take the love of Christ and apply it to our daily choices. And what drew so many people to John Wesley's preaching in England in the 1700s was that unlike the churches of the crown that only welcomed the wealthy, Wesley encouraged equal worship participation from all classes and all stations of life. Similar to the early Christian churches, the early Methodists took responsibility for one another and cared for each other's <coughs> needs. Early Methodists formed small accountability groups with maybe 10 people who met regularly apart from worship to discuss everything. They discussed their sinfulness, their successes, their failures, the opportunities they saw for serving God. And as America was colonized, early Methodists took some pretty strong social stands and spoke out on controversial issues involving Christian principles, things like slavery. They expressed their, their profound opposition to slave trade, to smuggling, and to cruel treatment of prisoners. The process of formalizing these actions into their belief statements became the roots of what we now call our social creed, our social principles. Social principles aren't, for, aren't really like church law. But they are a prayerful and thoughtful effort on the part of the world church to speak to human issues in the contemporary world from a sound biblical and theological foundation. They're a call to all of us in the United Methodist Church to a prayerful, studied dialogue of faith and practice. <laughs> so what do they address? Well, just about everything that you can imagine. And as we look at this list, we need to check our political ideologies at the door because opinions on these topics will vary greatly. And we won't have time to look at specific positions on these topics, but I think it's important that we understand that Methodists do have positions on all of these. So first of all, it's the natural world. We love our Mother Earth, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. We love Mother Earth. All creation is the Lord's, and humans are responsible for the ways that we use it, and we're responsible for the ways that we abuse it. We're given stewardship over creation, like I was telling the kids. As living conditions improved and technologies improved, it allowed humans to grow in number, our lives to be longer and more enriched. But these gains can also result in overconsumption and misuse of natural and non-renewable sources. <coughs> and this is true in both industrialized and emerging societies. Our social principle for the natural world encourages us to proactively care for cre the creation that God has entrusted to us and to all generations. 
It's our responsibility to place a high priority on changes in systems and lifestyles that would support a more ecologically equitable and sustainable world. And this includes outer space as well. So the universe. And it allows for a higher quality of life for all of God's creation. Now, forgive me, because this is kind of like a lecture, and I apologize for that. This is just one that there's so much information, I just want to give it all to you. Now we look at the nurturing community. These are principles that relate to providing the potential for human beings and the fullness of humanity. And that's huge. Methodists seek to encourage the fullest potential in people, and we do this because we believe in the gospel understanding that all persons are important. All people are created by God, and all people are loved by Jesus Christ. Methodists support social climates in which human communities are strengthened for the sake of all persons and their growth. And we also encourage using language that uplifts each other's value and is aligned with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the nurturing principles address family dynamics and the way we treat each other. And this includes human sexuality, and that's getting a lot of attention right now. And so along with the paragraphs and the discipline which relate to who can minister and who can be married in the church, and in the draft of the new social principles, those, those topics are are set aside for now until we have this new this general conference next year. Then there's the social community. While nurturing deals with encouraging human potential, the social community addresses how each person is equally valued. So it obviously overlaps with the nurturing community. And this is where Methodists get really personal. We support the rights of all persons to have equal access to housing, education, communication, employment, medical care, legal redress for grievances, and physical protection. We deplore acts of hate and violence. And we have positions on alcohol and drugs and tobacco and medical experimentation and genetic technology, rights to health care, and even rural and urban life, sustainable farming, and media violence. I'm telling you, we, there's, there's a principle for everything here. And then we have the economic community. Methodists view the economic systems to be under the judgment of God, just like the rest of creation. <clears throat> we recognize that governments are responsible for developing and implementing sound fiscal and monetary po policies that provide for the economic life for individuals and businesses. But we believe that both private and public enterprises are responsible for the social costs of doing business. We support measures to reduce the concentration of wealth to a few, and we support efforts to revise support programs that would benefit one person over at the expense of another. So we believe in a more equitable system. Economic statements include positions about gambling and graft and public indebtedness, poverty, work and leisure, consumption of goods, property ownership, corporate responsibility, and even collective bargaining. It's a lot. Then the political community. Our allegiance to God, of course, takes precedence over allegiance to any state. And Methodists acknowledge the vital function of government as a principal vehicle for the ordering of society. Because we know ourselves to be responsible to God for social and political life. Methodists look to governments to be responsible for their protection of their basic freedoms and their human rights, education, information, civil disobedience, or civil obedience, restorative justice, capital punishment, military service, and yes, separation of church and state so one does not dominate the other. And finally, the world community. God's world, one world. Now in some ways, we're closer than we've ever been to each other. At the same time, we're also farther apart. Technology connects us in different ways, but it also separates us, right? But our moral and spiritual capacity fail to achieve a stable world. So our social principles address the questions of nations and cultures, problems that do not wait to answer. Injustice, war, exploitation, nuclear weapons, and the increase of tyranny in all forms. 
If humanity is going to continue on earth, we need to commit ourselves as a church to being persons who honestly love one another and seek the meaning of the gospel in all issues that divide people. So those are our social principles. It kind of seems like Methodists have their finger in every pie, right? Well, good. <coughs> is what does it mean for us to be disciples and transform the world if we don't intend to be engaged and active believers? We can't just be observers in this world. Our church cares enough to take a stand and to call us each into a response, no matter how controversial or complex a topic. I anchor our principles to that favorite verse in Micah, which really summarizes all of our social creed to do justice and to love greatly and to walk humbly with God. And look, I don't expect you to agree with United Methodist positions on all of those, insert, uh, the, those issues. And we really didn't talk about what those positions are, just that the church has <coughs> taken a position on these topics. And so I encourage you to find out more. And you can find out more on the United Methodist Church website. Personally, I like being part of a church that cares about what we believe so that we can have some guiding convictions about our relationship with God and guidance in our convictions with each other and our place in the world. So this is the heart of Methodism. It's good stuff. Amen. 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 Amen.